Tim Blackford is the SNP's new leader in the House of Commons. Uh, welcome. Thanks Good for evening. joining us. Did, did the opinion polls on independence play a part in Nicola Sturgeon's decision, do you think? No, I think what we've done today is we've reset the timing on when an independence referendum may take place. But if we look at where we are, the SNP has won the last three Scottish elections. We've just won the Westminster election, 35 seats out of 59. I know we've lost some seats from 2015, but we're still a remarkably popular party and a remarkably popular government in Edinburgh. But we need to reflect the circumstances throughout the United Kingdom. And I think now that we have a minority government in the UK, I would argue there's no longer a majority for a hard Brexit. What we need to push for is the ability to represent Scotland's interests in the talks that are going to take well, place. No, oh, yes. What happened last year, Evan, is that we went with a manifesto seeking the support of the Scottish people. If there was to be a material change in circumstances, mm -hmm. that we wanted the option to put a referendum that the people well, then why don't you Well, why don't you push for a well, referendum? Because, You're now because, breaking because, your own manifesto. No, we're not, because circumstances have changed. Our immediate priority is to protect the interests of Scotland, and that means staying in the single market. It means remaining within the customs union. And there's going to be an opportunity over the course of the next period to push for that. What so asked, that's the change in circumstances. The change a, in circumstances material, is you can now fight for the soft Brexit you, 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 you ab want. Absolutely, and we will seek to affect the compromise. you couldn't have done that before the general election. Well, the UK government didn't seem to want to compromise with us. The government in Edinburgh published a document last December, a compromise document, where we recognised that the UK had voted to come out of Europe. But we also sought the recognition from Westminster of our position. We haven't had a meeting of the Joint Ministerial Committee since February. That has to happen. We understand that we did less well than perhaps we did in 2015. We want to demonstrate to the people of Scotland that we are worthy of their trust. And the immediate priority is to protect the interest of the people of Scotland by making sure we can stay okay. within the single well, market. Well, let's talk about but, that, because that's your case. That's your case. It is, but if, if I may say so, a referendum should be seen as an insurance policy in Scotland right. being dragged out of the single market against its will. Right. Can I ask you, if you hate the Brexit, the Brexit that Theresa May is leading us or taking us towards, do you have the power to shout from the sidelines very loudly and prominently to delay or to obstruct? I think what the people, not just of Scotland but the United Kingdom want, is to see politicians working together. And we're offering to the government to get round the table to see if we can represent the interests of those of us like us in Scotland and in Northern Ireland. Understanding that if, she, if, if Theresa May doesn't play it like you want to play it, that you have the power to delay or obstruct well, the Brexit it, that she it, wants. It is the case. By, for example, not voting for the Great Repeal Bill, well, the elements that we, affect Scotland. Uh, I mean, of course, that will happen in Westminster, so that we have opportunities right. to influence the debate. And, and we will seek to do that on a cross-party basis. Right. But there will also be a legislative consent motion that has to be presented to the Scottish Parliament. But we're not talking about threatening anybody. No, if motion. I may say, if we end up in a situation that we are dragged out of the single market and there's a threat to our economy, a threat yeah. to jobs and prosperity, then we need to have the option of giving that referendum right to the people of Scotland. Right. That's the ultimate power that we have. Right. So can I be clear, will there be a second referendum before, say, 2021, if Britain adopts a softer Brexit than Theresa May has been talking well, about? Because what we're talking about is a referendum if there's a material change in circumstances. Is that At the end of the Brexit process, every member state of the EU is going to have a vote. It's surely right and proper that the people of Scotland are offered that opportunity as well. That's the point. It's about making sure that we have a parachute, if you like, we can protect ourselves against a hard Brexit. That's the salient right. So there will be a referendum if, it's, if we're out of the single market, you will request a referendum and you would do it before 2021. We would need to move as quickly as possible right. as we could at that point. Look, let's very, very briefly finish by talking about the DUP deal, because I yeah. think you've said um, Scotland has been shortchanged by money being sent to Northern Ireland. I don't think this is a very good deal for the Union and the United Kingdom because what you've got, in effect, is that the Conservative government is buying votes from the DUP with a £1 billion bribe. That's what it amounts to. Shortchanged by well, the... David Mundell, the Secretary of State for Scotland, made it clear that there had to be, there had to be consequentials from this, from this DUP deal. Now, that should happen across the United Kingdom. If we were being treated on an equivalent basis to what's happening with Northern Ireland, that would be an additional investment in Scottish public services and infrastructure of £2.9 billion. But that, so you have to treat all parts of the United Kingdom on an equal basis. Right. I say to you that in the, in the election campaign, we argued that austerity is not working. It's taking cash out of the pockets of the poorest. We argued for an investment of £118 billion over the course of the Parliament, balancing the books. And what we argued for was investment right across the United Kingdom. We're not playing one part of the United Kingdom off against each other. It's the UK government that's done that with this shoddy deal. In Blackford, thanks very much. Thanks.